In the topic of uh, metrology for mariners, today I want to explain the terms El Nino and La Nina to mariners who are studying for examinations. Now the term El Nino translates from Spanish as the boy child. Peruvian fishermen originally used the term to describe the appearance uh, of a warm ocean current of the South American coast usually around the time of Christmas in December. It is now commonly accepted term to describe the warming of the central and eastern tropical Pacific Ocean. La Nina on the other hand translates to girl child and is the opposite of Enzo phase to El Nino. I'll talk about the Enzo phase and what it all means. So let's get started with uh, El Nino first. So if you're familiar with the geography of the world, Along the west coast of South America, where the cool Peruvian current sweeps northward, southerly winds promote upwelling of cold, nutrient-rich water that gives rise to large fish populations, especially anchovies. The abundance of fish supports a large population of seabirds whose droppings, called guano, produce huge phosphate-rich deposits which support the fertilizer industry. Near the end of the calendar year, a warm current of nutrient poor tropical water, often moving southward, replaces the cold nutrient rich surface water. Because this condition frequently occurs around Christmas, local residents call it El Nino, referring to the Christ child. In most years, the warming lasts for only a few weeks to a month or more after which weather patterns usually return to normal and fishing improves. However, when El Nino conditions last for many months and a more extensive ocean warming occurs, the economic results can be catastrophic. This extremely warm episode, which occurs at regular intervals of two to seven years and covers a large area of the tropical Pacific Ocean, is now referred to as a major El Nino event or simply El Nino. During a major El Nino event, large numbers of fish and marine plants may die. Dead fish and birds may litter the water and beaches of Peru. Their decomposing carcasses deplete the water's oxygen supply, which leads to the bacterial production of huge amounts of smelly hydrogen sulfide. The El Nino of 1972 and 73 reduced the annual Peruvian anchovy catch from 10.3 million metric tons in 1971 to just 4.6 million metric tons in 1972. Since much of the harvest of this fish is converted into fish meal and exported for use in feeding livestock and poultry, the world's fish meal production in 1972 was greatly reduced. Countries such as the US that rely on fish meal for animal feed had to use soybeans as an alternative. This raised poultry prices in the United States by more than 40%. Why does the ocean become so warm over the eastern tropical Pacific? Normally in the tropical Pacific Ocean, the trades are persistent winds that blow westward from a region of higher pressure over the eastern Pacific towards a region of lower pressure centered near Indonesia. The trades create upwelling that brings cold water to the surface. As this water moves westward, it is heated by sunlight and the atmosphere. Consequently, in the Pacific Ocean, surface water along the equator usually is cool in the east and warm in the west. In addition, the dragging of surface water by the trades raises sea level in the western Pacific and lowers it in the eastern Pacific, which produces a thick layer of warm water over the tropical western Pacific Ocean and a weak ocean current called the countercurrent that flows slowly eastwards towards South America. Every few years, the surface atmospheric pressure patterns breaks down as air pressure rises over the region of the Western Pacific and falls over the Eastern Pacific. This change in pressure weakens the trades and during strong pressure reversals, east winds are replaced by west winds that strengthen the counter current. Surface water warms over a broad area of the tropical Pacific and heads eastward towards South America in a surge known as Kelvin wave which is an enormous wave, perhaps 15 centimeters high, but extending for hundreds of kilometers north and south of the equator. 
towards the end of the warming period which may last between 1 and 2 years atmospheric pressure over the eastern pacific reverses and begins to rise whereas over the western pacific it falls this seesaw pattern of reversing surface air pressure at opposite ends of the pacific ocean is called the southern oscillation because the pressure reversals and ocean warming are more or less simultaneous scientists call this phenomena the el nino southern oscillation or enso for short although most enso episodes follow a similar evolution each event has its own personality differing in both strength and behavior during especially strong enso events such as in 1982 83 and 97 98 the easterly trades may actually become westerly trades as these winds push eastward they drag surface water with them this dragging raises sea level in the eastern pacific and lowers sea level in the western pacific the eastward moving water gradually warms under the tropical sun becoming as much as 6 degrees or 11 fahrenheit warmer than normal in the eastern equatorial pacific gradually a thick layer of warm water pushes into coastal areas of ecuador and peru choking off the upwelling that supplies cold nutrient rich water to southern america's coastal region this unusually warm water may extend from south america's coastal region for many thousands of kilometers westward along the equator such a large area of abnormally warm water can have an effect on, on global wind patterns the warm tropical water fuels the atmosphere with additional warmth and moisture which the atmosphere turns into additional storminess and rainfall the added warmth from the oceans and the release of latent heat during condensation apparently influence the westerly winds aloft in such a way that certain regions of the world experience too much rainfall whereas others have too little meanwhile over the warm tropical central pacific the frequency of typhoons usually increases however over the tropical atlantic between africa and central america the winds aloft tend to disrupt the organization of thunderstorms that is necessary for hurricane development hence there are fewer hurricanes in this region during strong el nino events although the actual mechanism by which changes in surface ocean temperatures influence global wind pattern is not fully understood the byproducts are plain to see for example during exceptionally warm el ninos drought is normally felt in indonesia southern africa and australia while heavy rains and flooding often occur in ecuador and peru in the northern hemisphere a strong subtropically western jet stream normally directs storms into california and heavy rain into the gulf coast states sometimes the damages due to flooding winds and droughts may result in billions of dollars of damages here is a quick summary of what i said in the last few minutes regarding the el nino and the el nino southern oscillation we now move to la nina following an enso event the trade winds usually return to normal however if the trades are exceptionally strong or trade winds are exceptionally strong unusually cold surface water moves over the central and eastern pacific and the warm water and rainy weather is confined mainly to the western tropical pacific this cold water episode which is the opposite of el nino conditions has been termed la nina which translates into the girl child now if you have seen the previous diagrams you must have seen that under ordinary conditions higher pressure existed over the southern pacific and lower pressure near indonesia produced easterly trade winds along the equator these winds promoted upwelling and cooler ocean water in the eastern pacific while warmer water prevails in the western pacific now the trade winds become part of a circulation called the walker circulation that typically finds rising air and heavy rain over the western pacific and sinking air and generally dry weather over the eastern pacific 
when the trades are exceptionally strong water along the equator in the eastern pacific becomes quite cool this cool event is el or la nina during el nino conditions atmospheric pressure decreases over the eastern pacific and rises over the western pacific this change in pressure causes the trades to weaken or reverse direction this situation enhances the counter current that carries warm water from the west over a vast region of the eastern tropical pacific the thermocline which separates the warm water of the upper ocean from the cold water below changes as the ocean conditions change from el nino to la nina this is what is being shown here in the diagram which explains my explanation in a pictorial form as you must have now realized that el nino and southern oscillations are part of a large scale ocean atmospheric interaction that can take several years to run its course during this time there are certain regions in the world where significantly or significant climatic responses to an enso event are likely using data from previous enso episodes scientists have obtained a global picture of where climatic abnormalities are most likely to occur such ocean atmosphere interactions where warm or cold surface ocean temperatures can influence precipitation patterns in distant part of the world are called teleconnections some scientists feel that the trigger necessary to start an enso event lies within the changing of the seasons especially the transition periods of spring and fall others feel that the winter monsoon plays a major role in triggering a major el nino event as we noted earlier it appears that an enso episode and the monsoon system are intricately linked so that a change in one brings about a change in the other i hope that with this explanation and the videos and the attached pictures you understood the concepts of the el nino and la nina and the impact that they have on the weather patterns in the world the precipitation patterns are also shown on your screens right now